education, intonation, pronunciation, speak right to the nation. You want to know how? Please ask me now. And today we are going to enjoy an interesting package, and that is words often mispronounced. I have decided to put all the words often mispronounced we did uh, in the previous class together in a single package. And we are going to have 50 words often mispronounced. Can you imagine that? <laughs> Well, now let's start learning. Now, because many of you mentioned that uh, you like to have a note uh, with my diction class, I have decided to equally add a note to it. What you should take note is that this word often mispronounced is not just often mispronounced by some second language speakers, but sometimes in among our native speakers, we can have these words often mispronounced. Now, let's get it started. Okay, now, my first word, as you can see, is abattoir. Repeat after me, abattoir. Okay, now, what is abattoir? Abattoir is a slaughterhouse. And let's use it in a sentence. My dad works in an abattoir. Repeat after me. My dad works in an abattoir. Okay, you did very well. Give yourself a super clap. Good. So it's abattoir and not what I hear people say as abatio. I don't know where they got that from. <laughs> Okay, so it's actually abattoir. Abattoir. You can see the stress on the first syllable. Take note of that and make good use of it. Okay, the second word is pronounced accessory. Accessory. Did you notice I made the sound? After I said ah, listen again and repeat after me. Accessory. Good. Now, what is accessory? Well, accessory is a thing which can be added to something else in order to make it more useful, versatile, or attractive. Now, Let's use the word accessory in a sentence. My mom wore an accessory to complement a dress. My mom wore an accessory to complement a dress. Repeat after me. My mom wore an accessory to complement her dress. Okay, you did very well. 
Now, let's go to the next word. Accent. Now, in this word, the same thing is happening. The same thing is happening. We can see that we have the word accessory produced with k. Listen again and repeat after me. Accessory. Accent. Accessory. Accent. Very good. And I hear among some speakers, they just go accent and they, talk, they, they take it off. Well, some say they're trying to do assimilation. But for children to be able to know what you're talking about, always go accessory, accent. Okay, now what is accent? Well, accent is a distinctive way of pronouncing a language, especially one associated with a particular country, area, or social class. Now let's use it in a sentence. Listen and repeat after me. I love his British accent. I love his British accent. Okay, you did very well. Now let's get to the next word. Our next word is ajen. Ajen. And not ajon. I wonder where people got that from. <laughs> it's not ajon. It's actually ajen. There is an er, er sound. So it's ajen and not ajon. Okay, now let's repeat after me. Ajen. Now we have a sentence. The judge adjourned the case to next year. Repeat after me. The judge adjourned the case to next year. Okay. Of course, we know the meaning of adjourn. It means to break up a meeting, legal case, or game with the intention of re Zooming it later. Okay, now let's move to our next word. Our next word is ages. I often hear students call it ages. That's a name in my country. So it's not ages, it's actually ages. And what's the meaning of ages? Well, ages means the protection backing or support of a particular person or organization. Now let's have it in a sentence. My company is under the aegis of the federal government. Repeat after me. My company is under the aegis of the federal government. Okay, you did very well. Good. Now let's go to our next word. Okay, our next word. Let me bring it up a bit so that you can see it. Our next word is very good. Good. Our next word is aesthetic. Aesthetic. And nerds. Aesthetic. I, I hear different pronunciation. What you should take note is that at the beginning we have e and not a. So say aesthetic. Aesthetic. Okay, you did very well. Now, what is aesthetic? Aesthetic. Uh, has to do with uh, beauty or the appreciation of beauty. Now, let's use it in a sentence. That's an aesthetic painting. 
Okay, you did very well. Repeat after me. That's an aesthetic painting. Good. Now let's take a look at the next word. Although very simple, but is often mispronounced. It's pronounced art. Now I often hear people say after. I don't know where they got that from. But some say they're trying to do strong pronunciation. Yes, that's true. But once you use it in a sentence, you must say after. It's just a T. You say alone. You don't need to say the ER. Because the ER gives you sure sound. And you know, sure sound is a weak sound. So, we say after. Just say the T alone. T -t -t. The same way when you say doctor. You just say the T. -t. Especially words with the sure sound ending. You just take the sure sound off because for every consonant with the that comes before the ER, OR, especially sure ending words, is just a consonant you say because the consonant itself carries a sure sound. For example, if I say t, 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 it carries a sure sound. That's why you are able to hear it. Okay? You are able to hear it because it carries a sure sound. So go. Then say after. So it's not after. No, 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 no. That's not English. I don't know where we got that from. So say after. Very good. And you can see the transcription there. It's a preposition. And what does it mean? It means in the time following an event or another period of time. After. Now let's use it in a sentence. Cinderella and her prince lived happily ever after. Repeat after me. Cinderella and her prince lived happily ever after. Cinderella and her prince lived happily ever after. Okay. Let's go to the next word. The next word is pronounced almond. Now you should be very careful when you say this word because the letter L is not pronounced. The A and the L will give us A. So let me hear you say almond is a oval edible not like seed of the almond tree growing in a woody shell uh, widely used as food. Okay, now let's use it in a sentence. I love almonds. I love almonds. Okay, let's quickly look at the next word. It's also having a short ending, so you're just going to hear the consonant sound at the end. It's pronounced anchor. Anchor. Did you notice anything? Okay, it's pronounced anchor. Now I didn't say uncle, so be careful. Listen again, it's pronounced anchor. And try to bring it up so that you can see it. And you see it very well. It's pronounced anchor. Anchor. And it means a uh, Heavy objects attached to a cable or chain and used to moor a ship to the sea bottom. Okay, so let's see this in a sentence. How would a ship fare without an anchor? I don't think so. <laughs> now repeat after me. How would a ship fare without an anchor? Okay, you did very well. Give yourself a super clap. Now let's take a look at the next word. I'm going to scroll it up gently so that you can see it. And that is our next word showing up. And that is 
annihilation 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 now in my transcription I just gave you annihilate because that's the base word but if you were to put the remaining transcription it will be annihilation and it will be sure and mm. so it's annihilation now what is annihilation it means complete destruction or obliteration now let's use it in a sentence the terrorists were annihilated by the army let's take the sentence again the terrorists were annihilated by the army of course what do you expect you don't try the army <laughs> Okay, so instead of saying annihilation, please always say annihilation. And if you have someone who has been mispronouncing the word, especially if the person is your pastor, saying God will annihilate your enemies and your prayers are not answered, it's just because you are mispronouncing the word Annihilation. <laughs> That's just a joke. Okay, it's believed that uh, Holy Spirit understand even bad and good pronunciation. But the point is, if you have someone who is mispronouncing the word, you can help the person out to stop pronouncing it the wrong way. So it's actually annihilation. Okay, now let's take a look at the next word. The next word is quite simple. However, I notice that many mispronounce it. It's pronounced area. You notice it starts with air. In some transcription, you have the the air sound. And you go area, air, air, area. So what you should take note is not a, it's not area. I hear some people say area. <laughs> area no no it's actually area now when you say area you're talking about a region or a part of a town a country or the world so let's use it in a sentence repeat after me do you know the area where I live. Do you know the area where I live? And not, do you know the area where I live? No, that's what we're trying to avoid. So, go. Do you know the area where I live? Brilliant. And that's lovely. And that's the way you should say going uh, uh, from today. Now, let's bring it back. We have uh, done area. Let's scroll up. Aha! This is another word. How often we hear my students mispronounce? Well, this word, it has an inclusive sound, which is k. So it's pronounced ak. Tick. Arctic. Arctic. What I want you to take notice, it has the K sound before the T. And that is very important for you to take note of. It has a K sound before the T. Okay, so repeat after me. Arctic. Good. And what's an Arctic? It's relating to the regions around the North Pole. Now let's let's have a sentence. The Arctic is a very cold place. Repeat after me. The Arctic is a very cold place. Okay. Now, you, you, you may be sounding like, oh, okay, I'm not, what I'm used to is Arctic, 
Okay, please take note. It's arctic. So repeat after me. An arctic is a very cold place. Okay, you did very well. Give yourself a super clap. Well done. Now let's take our next word for today, and that is pronounced archive. Archive. And that's what I hear people say, archive. And that's where you need to take note. The CH in this case is giving us k. Recalling the last video, I told you we have CH sounding k and we have CH sounding sh. Recalling the last video, I said we have the CH sounding k and sh. Now, this is one of it. Archive. Repeat after me. Archive. Repeat after me. Archive. Okay. What is an archive? Well, an archive is a, a collection of historical documents or records providing information about a place, institution, a group of people. Okay, so let's use this in a sentence. I store my documents in an archive. Repeat after me. I store my documents in an archive. Okay, you did very well. Now let's move to the next word. Now, I often hear students say, Amoeba, Amoeba. Now, the right pronunciation is Amoeba. 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 And not Amoeba. Now, where's an Amoeba? An Amoeba is a, a single celled animal that catches food and moves about by extending finger-like projection of protoplasm. I'm sure you will have learned that in science. Now let's have the word amoeba used in a sentence. Now let's have the word amoeba used in a sentence. We have Amoebas can't be seen with the naked eyes. Amoebas can't be seen with the naked eyes. Amoebas can't be seen with the naked eyes. Okay, now let's look at the next word. The next word is assume. 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 Repeat after me. Assume. And it means suppose to be the case without proof. Now let's use assume in a sentence. Let's assume we are in London. Let's assume we are in London. Repeat after me. Let's assume we are in London. Okay. Please take note the word is assume and not assume. Repeat after me. Assume. Good. Now let's go to our final, our next, let's go to our next word. Now, let's go to our next word. It's pronounced et or eight. So there can be two pronunciations. So what you should notice is that the first pronunciation et can be used or eight. And the two pronunciations are very correct. 
Okay. Now, let's have a sentence. I ate bread and egg for lunch. Or you could say, I ate bread and egg for lunch. So the two pronunciations are very correct. So just stick to one and it's okay. Now let's go to another word. The word is pronounced aten. Aten. Repeat after me. Aten. It's pronounced aten. Good. And not atoni. It's not or, it's actually air. Er. Aten. Good. Now, let's have the meaning. It means a person, typically a lawyer appointed to act for another in business or legal matters. Let's have a sentence. Mr. Matthew is my attorney. Mr. Matthew is my attorney. Repeat after me. Mr. Matthew is my attorney. Okay, you did very well. Now let's take a look at the next word. I will scroll up again in order for us to have our next word. Good. I often hear people say, Apostle. <laughs> it's not Apostle, it's actually Apostle. Repeat after me, Apostle. In this case, we have a syllabic consonant where we have the U coming to be the peak or to form the peak of the syllable. Okay, so it's Apostle and not Apostle. So repeat after me, Apostle. Apostle refers to each of the 12 chief disciples of Jesus Christ. Now let's have a sentence. James is one of the apostles of Jesus. Repeat after me. James is one of the apostles of Jesus. Okay. Now let's take our very next word. Atheist. Atheist. Now, take note, it is not artist. It is atheist. And who is referred to as an atheist? A person who disbelieves or lacks belief in the existence of God or gods. Now let's have a sentence. Harry's family are devoted atheists. Harry's family are devoted atheists. Okay, now let's have our next word. And this one is very interesting. It's pronounced Ori and not Ori. Take note of that. Repeat after me. Ori. Ori. And what is Ori? Well, Ori is a, a way from the or from the usual or expected course. It means away from the usual or expected course. And that is Ori. Now let's have uh, a sentence. The movie turned out Ori. The movie turned out Ori. And so if I do link in it will become the movie turned out Ori. Apple. Apple. 
you will notice I ended the word with l. 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 Okay, so it's pronounced apple. Apple. And not apple. There's no o sound there. It ends with a l. So it's apple. Apple. Okay, we know what an apple is. The definition is also there. Let's have a sentence. Apples are delicious. Apples are delicious. Apples are delicious. Okay, our next word is or. So it's not pronounced our. I don't know where we got that pronunciation from. It's actually or. Repeat after me. Or. And it means a feeling of reverential respect mixed with fear or wonder. For example, in a sentence, God's creation is awe-inspiring. Repeat after me. God's creation is awe-inspiring. Okay, you did very well. Now let's go to our next word. It's pronounced ballet. 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 And what does it mean? An artistic dance formed. An artistic dance form performed to music using precise and highly formalized set steps and gestures. Ballet. I can dance ballet. And not I can dance ballet. That is common among second language speakers. Please take note of that. Our next word is bosom. Bosom. My bosom friend. Bosom. Okay, and what is bosom? It's use of a friend, very close or intimate. Repeat after me. Daniel is my bosom friend. Daniel is my bosom friend. And not Daniel is my bosom friend. No, it's actually bosom. Bosom. Daniel is my bosom friend. Okay, now let's go to the next word. Our de next word, I have to scroll it. Build. I would love to build my house on a mill. I would love to build my house on a mill. Listen again and repeat after me. I would love to build my house on a mill. Okay, you did very well. Now let's go to our very next word. Bow. Bow. It means a main branch of a tree. Now repeat after me. Bow. So, that's the same way we say like when you bow. So if you forget the word, just remember. Bow. When it means the branch of a tree. Okay. Now let's have a sentence. I sat at the bow of a mango tree. Again, I sat at the bow of a mango tree. I sat at the bow of a mango tree. Okay. 
Our next word is bird. 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 Repeat after me. Bird. I often hear friends or students pronounce it as bed. Or some even sound it like board. It's neither. It's actually bird. Er. Listen and repeat after me. Bird. Okay, and we have the meaning there also. Now, let's take the sentence. I love it when bird sings. I love it when bird sings. Okay, now let's let's take the next word. Bargain. Bargain. And it's not bargain. It has a long R at the beginning. So please take note. Bargain. And don't try to glide the second syllable as A. No. Just give it bargain. Now let's have a sentence. The table was a real bargain. The table was a real bargain. Bargain. Okay. Now let's go to our very next word. Because. 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 Now, let's use it in a sentence. We did it because we felt it's our duty. Repeat after me. We did it because we felt it's our duty. We did it because we felt it's our duty. Repeat after me. We did it because we felt it's our duty. Butcher. 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 And not Busha. Please take note of that. Butcher. Now, who's a butcher? A person whose trade is cutting up and selling meat in a shop. Now, let's have a sentence. Daniel's dad is a butcher. Repeat after me. Daniel's dad is a butcher. Okay. Repeat after me. Daniel's dad is a butcher. Okay, you did very well. Now let's can you see there? Now let's take the next word. Now let's take the next word. Bouquet. And some pronounce it as bow. Bouquet. But what you should take notice is not bouquet. It's bouquet. And what does it mean? An attractive arranged bunch of flowers, especially one presented as a gift or carried at a ceremony. Now let's have a sentence. I bought my wedding bouquet from the flower store. That's very nice. I bought my wedding bouquet from a flower store. I bought my wedding bouquet from a flower store. Repeat after me. I bought my wedding bouquet from a flower store. Okay, you did very well. Well done. Now let's proceed to the next word. Bottle. Did you take note of anything? Notice I didn't say Ooh, at the end of the word, I actually said 
I actually said t and l t and l. Listen and repeat after me. Bottle. 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 And not bottle. Good. Now let's have a let's have a sentence. A glass or now let's have a sentence. He opened he opened he opened the bottle of beer. He opened he opened a bottle of beer. He opened the bottle of beer. He opened the bottle of beer. Our next word is brow. And not bro. Repeat after me. Brow. Now let me scroll it up for easy viewing. So it's actually brow. And that is a person's forehead. Let's have a sentence. He wiped his brow. He wiped his brow. And that is why we say eyebrow. Okay, take note of that. It's not bro. I often hear my students say bro, but it's actually brow. Now let's consider our next word. It's pronounced blood and not blood. Repeat after me blood. Blood. Of course, we all know uh, the meaning of blood, and of course, we can use it in a sentence. I have blood in my veins. Okay, our next word is bank. 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 Please take note of that. It has a mm, mm. bank. Bank. Okay. So please take note of that. Willows lined the bank of the stream. Okay. Now let's go to repeat after me. Battle. I'm going to a battle ground. Battle, and of course you know what battle is. To to fight, a sustained fight between large organized armed forces. Battle. E.g., we can have. The battle lasted for several hours. The battle lasted for several hours. Battle. Okay. Now let's go to our next word. Our next word is canoe. Canoe. And now it's canoe. Okay, we know what it means. A light, narrow, Boat with pointed ends and no nail propelled with a paddle or paddles. I traveled to the other side of the river using a canoe. I traveled to the other side of the river using a canoe. 
Okay. Now let's take the next word. Cough. Now I often hear some of my students say cough. And they try to explain that because the O-U in capo is pronounced up. So they go capo, country. Now it's not the same thing here in C-O-U-G-H, it's pronounced cough, cough. Now let's have a sentence. He tried to speak and started to cough. He tried to speak and started to cough. Okay, now let's consider our very next word. Creature, creature, and not creature. <laughs> Take note of that. It's actually creature. Okay, now the word creature uh, can refer to an animal as distinct from a human being. Creature. Now let's have a sentence. Peacocks are beautiful creature. Peacocks are beautiful creatures. Okay, you did very well. So going going forward, it is creature and not creature. Okay, now let's take the next word. Our next word is castle. Castle. Repeat after me. Castle. And of course, we know what a castle is. You can have an example. Kings live in a castle. Let's have another, let's have another example. My house is a castle. Kings live in a castle. Repeat after me. Okay. My house is a castle. Repeat after me. My house is a castle. Okay, and you did very well. And we're making progress. We've done so many words now. Let's now look at another word. And the word is kennel, kennel, and not colonel. Please take note of that. Repeat after me, kennel, kennel. Daniel's dad is a kennel. And let's have a sentence. Daniel's dad is a kennel. Daniel's dad is a kennel. Repeat after me. Daniel's dad is a kennel. And that's the rank of officer in the army. Okay. And let's take our very next word. And this word can be very surprising. And that is the word calcium. Calcium. The chemical element of atomic number 20, a soft gray metal. And we can have a sentence. Milk is rich in calcium. Repeat after me. Milk is rich in calcium. Milk is rich in calcium. Milk is rich in calcium. Okay. Let's go to the next word. Conclusion. Conclusion. 
Conclusion. Our next word is conclusion. Conclusion. Repeat after me. Conclusion. And not conclusion. Now, you can say, so you can say the conclusion of the matter is fear God. Conclusion. Okay, so just take note that it is not conclusion. And we can have a sentence. The conclusion of the matter is fear the true God. The conclusion of the matter is fear the true God. Repeat after me. The conclusion of the matter is fear the true God. Okay, and let's look at the next word, let's scroll up a bit, and that is crap. Crap, and not creep, is taken of that. A light, thin fabric with a wrinkled surface. So we can have a crap bandage. Okay. Now, let's look at the next word. So we can have a crepe bandage. So we can have a crepe bandage. Okay. Now let's take a look at the next word. Chartres. Chartres. Repeat after me. Chartres. Okay, and what's a chartreuse? It's a pale green or yellow liquor made from brandy and aromatic herbs. So we can have James Dad loves drinking chartreuse. Take note, I didn't say chop, I said sh because the ch is giving us sh. Okay. Now, let's get to the next word. It's pronounced cart. Now, not everyone mispronounces this word, but I decided to add it up because I often hear my students saying, I cash you. Now, it's not intentional because if you ask them to spell the word, you will notice that they will, say, they will spell the word C A T C H. So, what happens is that the C H escapes when the word cut is pronounced. So, in order for you to control it, what do you do? Very simple. Simply take the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth, that is the hard palate and you glide it forward and do ch. So, if you do that at the end of that word, you will not mispronounce it. Now let's practice. Catch. Catch. Okay, you did very well. Well done. Okay, you did very well. Now let's go to our very next word. Couple. I know it's corporal. It's not the same thing that we do in cough, that we do in couple. They may have the same spelling formation, O-U, but for cough, it has O, and for couple, it has up. And they are two different sounds. So say couple. Now let's have a, a sentence. In three weeks, the couple fell in love and became engaged. Repeat after me. In three weeks, 
the couple fell in love and became engaged. Okay, you did very well. Well done. We have actually been learning a lot of work. Now, what you should do is very simple. Uh, in order for you to recall the words, all you need to do is to go over the video again and again. In that way, you will be able to recall the words. Okay? Our next word is Cisura. Cisura. And of course, in Greek and Latin verse, it's a break between words within a metrical foot. So it's used in literature, especially when you are writing a poem. And let's have uh, an example. Asizura performs the function of her comma. Repeat after me. Asizura performs the function of a comma. Okay, you did very well. Well done. Now, I often hear friends, and in fact, students pronounce it as com. I see it as o. No, it does not have o. It's actually a. Come, come here. Come over here. Come out of the room. Mom screamed. Oh, you should be. Come out of the room. Mom screamed. Repeat after me. Come out of the room. Mom screamed. <laughs> well done. You did very well. Now, you could divide the video into two. Watch the first part and then you watch the second part later. In order for you to recall all the words, or you write it as a note somewhere, and you try to recall each of the words so that you don't forget it. And like I said, you divide the video into two, watch up to a particular point, save that point, and then you keep watching later on. Okay, let's take our next word. It's pronounced chiffon. Chiffon. Repeat after me. Chiffon. Notice I didn't say chiffon. It's not ch, but with the spread lips. Sh chiffon. Chiffon. Repeat after me. Chiffon. Okay, you did very well. Now, where is a, a chiffon? It's a light, transparent fabric typically made of silk or nylon. Example, my mom wore a chiffon blouse to the wedding. My mom wore a chiffon blouse to the wedding. Repeat after me. My mom wore a chiffon blouse to the wedding. Okay, you did very well. Give yourself a super clap. Good. Now let's consider our very next word. Our very next word is complacent. Complacent. And not complacent. It's complacent. It's A. The statement of that. Now let us have a sentence. You can't afford to be complacent about security. Of course. That's the fact. That's the truth. You cannot afford that. Now let's repeat the sentence again. You can't afford to be complacent with security. You can't afford to be complacent about security. Repeat after me. You can't afford to be complacent about security. Okay, you did very well.
Well done. Now let's take a look at the next word. It's pronounced cattle. Cattle. And not katu. I often hear students pronounce it as katu. And there is no u at the end of the word. If you're giving an exam to choose a word that has u sound and you pronounce the word as katu, you will think there is a u sound there. So it's actually cattle. 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 Okay. Now let's have uh, a sentence. Cattle feed on grass. Okay. Now let's take our very next word, and that is chalet. Chalet, and not chalet or chalet. Please take note of that. It's not chalet. It's chalet. You notice that the ch is sounding sh. Chalet. Please take note of that. I would love to live in a chalet. I would love to live in a chalet. Repeat after me. I would love to live in a chalet. Okay, you did very well. Now let's move to our very next word. Congratulation. Did you take note of anything? You notice that I didn't say congratulation. I said congratulation. Here, the T is sounding And not t. just like we have in future, that's the same sound we have in congratulation. So it's congratulation, 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 Mr. James, congratulation, ch -ch -ch. congratulation. Ch -ch. Don't forget that. That is often mispronounced, especially by second language speakers. Okay, now let's look at the next word. Chicane. Chicane. Okay, you notice I didn't say chicane. I didn't say ch because the ch here is actually a French ch, so it gives sh chicane. Now, let's take a look at uh, a very good way to use it. The, Aust the Austrians, the Austrians' car flew out of control and spun across the chicane. And of course, a chicane is a sharp double bend created to form an obstacle on a motor racing track or road. Okay, now let's take a look at the next word. Coffee. I hear people say coffee. Okay, so it's coffee. The, the double E is not E, it's not coffee or coffee. Uh, it's coffee. It's a uh, coffee. May I have a cup of coffee? May I have a cup of coffee? So it's coffee. We can have a sentence. Get me a cup of coffee, please. Get me a cup of coffee, please. And sometimes native speaker we just go, get me a cup, please. 
But for clarity, get me a cup of coffee, please. Okay, now let's scroll up, 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 see more words, and that is captain. The very next word is captain. Captain. So it's not captain. And that is common among second language speakers. So it's captain. Mr. James used to be the captain of a ship. Repeat after me. Mr. James used to be the captain of a ship. Okay, well done. Now let's have another word. Now this is often mispronounced by many Nigerians and especially second language speakers. It's pronounced comedian. Comedian and not comedian. They sat watching an Irish they sat watching an Irish comedian telling jokes. And in Nigeria we have a popular comedian called AY. So I could say they sat watching a Y comedian telling jokes. Maybe that will not flow. But taking note of the sentence I use, they sat watching an Irish comedian telling jokes. So we can say they sat watching a Nigerian comedian telling jokes. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's get to our next word. Now this word can be pronounced as clack or clack. But in this note, I've given it clack. Repeat after me, clack. And like I said, it can be pronounced as clack, so just take note of that. Repeat after me. Mrs. Gloria is a bank clerk. It's correct. And it's also correct to say, Mrs. It's correct to say, Miss Gloria is a bank clerk. It's also correct to say, Miss Gloria is a bank clerk. Both pronunciations are acceptable. Okay, Miss Gloria is a bank, is a bank clerk. Miss Gloria is a bank clerk. Miss Gloria is a bank clerk. Or Miss Gloria is a bank clerk. Still the same thing, so there can be two pronunciation. So our next word is confusion. So you notice it has the jen, 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 confusion. Take note of the consonant sound coming in the last syllable, jen. Conclusion, confusion. So the same sound is what we have there. So the one we are looking at now, confusion. Now, we can have a sentence. There seems to be a confusion in the movies. Okay. Now let's have the next word. It's calm. And the B is silent. Please take note of that. And that's it. I think that's that many, many uh, second language speakers speak it correctly. Many Sakura language speakers pronounce it correctly, so it's calm without a B. And our very next word is often mispronounced. It's pronounced chastity. 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 And not chastity. But the base word is chastity. I mean, 
The base, the base word is chaste, but when you form another noun from it, it becomes chastity, chastity. I have made my vows of chastity to God, and not I have made my vows of chastity to God. No, it's actually I have made my vows of chastity to God. Okay, our very next, our very next word is cat blanche. Cat blanche. Cat blanche. Cat blanche. Cat blanche. Mr. Daniel gave me a cat blanche check. Cat blanche. That's not a common word. Cat blanche. Cat blanche. Repeat after me. Cat blanche. That's not a common word. But it's often mispronounced by those who use it when reading. Our next word is Christmas. Christmas. And not Christmas. The T is silent. Please take note of that. And let's look at our next word. Our next word is champagne. Now our next word is champagne. It's a white sparkling wine. The couple celebrated with a glass of champagne. So take note, it is not ch, ch it's sh champagne. The couple celebrated with a glass of champagne. Please take note of that, champagne. Our next word, what is on the same thing is chaperone. Chaperone. It's pronounced chaperone. 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 And a chaperone is uh, a person who accompanies and looks after another person or group of people. Our teachers served as a chaperone all through the discussion. Okay. Our next word is cash. Cash. It's a collection of items of the same type stored in a hidden or inaccessible place. For example, an arms cache. Okay, our next word is Chicago. Chicago. So it's not Chicago. This first sound is not Ch. Is actually Chicago. So I can say, I'm going to Chicago tomorrow. Or you can say, my uncle lives in Chicago. Chicago. Repeat after me. Chicago. Great. Well done. You did very well. Now let's learn another word is sick. Sick. Now if we hear guys call it chick, that girl is a chick. No, no, no. It's actually sick by that. Now don't forget to look out for the next set of 50 words in our next edition.
Till I see you next time, don't forget to speak in the right diction and please click the red button, this subscribe button, this subscription button and click the bell and give me a thumbs up if you have actually learnt something from today's class. Till I see you next time, don't forget to speak in the right diction. Bye-bye. Education, intonation, pronunciation, speak right to the nation. You want to know how? Please ask me now. Today, fine.